Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss extension part of the root locus. In this root locus, the one of the extension important part is the asymptotes. Asymptotes. What is asymptotes first? So here we have, for example, we have a one open loop transfer function is like this. This is one by s into s plus phi. Okay. In this if we draw the if we draw the yeah if we draw the root locus we have two poles and now uh, we have two poles s is there and s equal 0 is one pole and s equal minus phi is the one pole s equal minus phi is the one pole this is four this is four and this is s equal 0, this is s equal minus 5. We have the two poles. But we don't know where root locus branch is going on. For example, if you draw, so if you, if you hear the right side, there is no poles, there is no poles, okay. And here, the left side, we have a RL branch between this. Even, so this is zero, uh, 0 poles, that's why there is no RL branch. If you stand at the minus phi, the right side we have the one pole. That's why there is a RL branch is available. RL branch is available. But this RL branch is available. This root locus where it is going, we don't know. The ro this root locus is going this side, and this this root locus is going this side. And always keep in your mind that is the pole must be reaches to zero. If the pole is here, the zero is here, the root locus branches flows like this. It's, that means at this point gain value is zero and at this point gain value is the infinite. But here we have only the two poles, there is no zeros. Whenever there is no zeros, that means you should take zeros are here poles are two, those are one zero is pole another one is the five is the pole what about zeros zeros are infinite and another one is the infinite we have two poles those are the it will reach the infinite that's why we have to design infinite the asymptotes is nothing but asymptotes is nothing but infinite points infinite points the most important thing is you should keep in your mind that is always pole will reach the zero whenever only poles are available there is no zeros we should take zeros as infinite and the direction of the infinite will done by the asymptotes asymptotes will give the direction of the infinite otherwise we didn't get the we didn't get the root locus diagram so that's why we need to analyze here so so what is this asymptotes asymptotes these are the branches which are approaches to infinite infinity so there in this example in this example these are the asymptotes these dotted lines are asymptotes that will reach the infinite second the number of asymptotes is equal to the poles minus zeros so for example here we have only two poles so how many asymptotes we require we require two asymptotes two infinities are required two zeros are required so for example we have for example we have poles are three zeros are one and uh, number of asymptotes equals so pole minus zero minus one so here poles are three zeros is one uh, minus one no not minus 1, poles minus 0, 2. So, poles is 3 and 0 is 1. The asymptotes required is, to infinities are required, those are 2. This is called the, this will give the number of asymptotes n equal to poles minus 0. Next. The asymptotes must be symmetrical about real axis. This is very important thing. Always, Asymptotes are symmetric ab about the real axis. These are must and should be real axis symmetric about the real axis. Otherwise, it is not possible. Look at here. These are symmetric about the real axis. Right. 
next the asymptotes gives the direction of zeros when pole greater than zero so look at here here we have the two poles and we have the zeros here okay here same example we have poles and zeros poles are two one is zero another one is the minus five but zeros we don't know here the direction of the zeros so these asymptotes will give the direction of the zeros so that's why it will rl branches moves like this root locus branches moves like this next the asymptotes gives the direction of zeros when pole greater than zero right next the angle of asymptotes we we are discussing about the infinity branches those are asymptotes and what is the angle of asymptote so the angle of asymptote theta a equal to 2q plus 1 by p minus z into 180 here p is number of poles simply this is the number of poles what is z z is number of zeros number of zeros q is 0 1 2 up to poles minus 0 minus 1 so up to it depends on the number of poles and number of zeros and minus 1 it will be different so the formula is 2q plus 1 by poles minus 0 into 180 okay so this is about the asymptotes and angle of asymptotes both are very important in case of the root locus branch so we will discuss one problem to understand the asymptotes how asymptotes will acting okay so so here the problem is he is asking to find out the asymptotes how many asymptotes are available so first look at here first rather poles poles are minus 1 is 1 pole minus 2 is 1 pole minus 5 is the 1 pole okay next zeros zeros we have only one zero s equal to zero zero is only zero then how many asymptotes required look at here one zero is available for one pole is uh, entering into zero but there is no for this we have infinite and infinite so here number of asymptotes are required asymptotes number of infinity branches is required e is nothing but n that is poles minus zero or poles are poles are three zeros is one that means two that's why one infinity and another one another infinity okay right here once we will draw the root locus for this so draw the s plane here so this is the s plane and and this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis okay here this is the real axis this is the imaginary axis here first first is the zero so this is the s equal to zero this point is zero next is minus one minus one is the pole so this is the minus one and next is minus two minus 2 is the also the pole and next is minus 5 minus 5 is the poles so minus 1 minus 2 minus 5 are the three poles and s equal 0 is the 1 0 0 is represented always keep your mind 0 is this symbol dot symbol or round symbol pole is always into mark pole is always into mark so by this by this so we don't know we have two asymptotes and look at here so there is no rl branch actually there is no rl branch so that's why we have there is no rl branch means so there is no rl branch but for this pole right hand side we have a one zero here is the root locus branch we have one root locus branch is there but within we have two there is no root locus branch but here they, we don't know where is the root locus branch so that's why maybe we have the two asymptotes here that's why we have the two asymptotes here in between 
these two points we have the asymptotes maybe in this area we have the asymptotes okay asymptotes so by using this we can find the asymptote angles also we will use the asymptote angles also so so better to find the asymptote angles so how much angle so generally we have 2 is there asymptote angle formula is theta equal 2 q plus 1 into 180 by poles minus 0 so and we have two asymptotes 1 q equal to 0 because starts from q q and next is up to the poles minus 0 1 and poles minus 0 so remaining is 2 0 and 1 right they substitute this one you will get substituting this we will get the 90 here and again we substitute this we will get the so just substitute all these things the asymptote 1 theta a is equals to 2 into 0 plus 1 by 180 by okay poles minus 0 poles are 3 minus 1 so we will get 180 by 2 this is 90 so one asymptote is at 90 so I will take this plus 90 maybe here plus 90 so if you do for second thing you will get the another asymptote you will get minus 90 so you will get the another asymptote is minus 90 so that means one branch is entering from here so from this it will go to the infinite 0 and it will go to the infinite zero so this is the one zero this is the another zero so this is the root locus branch so this is the one rl branch and this is one is the rl branch understand yeah so these are this is about the asymptotes and asymptote angles okay i hope all of you understand this session about the asymptotes and asympt angle of asymptotes thank you